the D&D AI non-controversy, a new Laura Bailey RPG, and the Lord of the Rings lawsuit that ended the way that everyone thought it would. Give me the meat and give it to me at all. Welcome to Tabletop News Tuesday, our first news rundown of the week. Today, we're talking about the D&D controversy that wasn't a cool new RPG project narrated by Laura Bailey and the bizarre Lord of the Rings lawsuit, which ended the way everyone knew it would. Now, remember, if you like these kinds of news videos, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons so we can keep making them. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, on to the news. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? If you were on Twitter earlier this week, you may have seen a little bit of an AI controversy emerge surrounding some D&D art before it quickly went up into flames. A content creator, who we're not going to name because we're not trying to pile on to the fellow, posted a video on YouTube accusing Dungeons & Dragons of using AI enhanced or generated artwork in a promo piece for the 2024 Player's Handbook. The video pointed to the lighting choices, some asymmetry in the art, and some other artistic choices, as well as a uh, AI art checker as proof that the art was likely AI generated. Unfortunately, this content creator didn't actually reach out to the artist he was accusing for a statement or do any sort of follow-up or really any kind of legwork at all. He just went off of his gut and some vibes. Well. You know, when I'm not voicing beloved videos on the internet, I'm actually a journalist. So I decided to reach out to both Wizards of the Coast and the artist, whose name is Nestor Osandon, and I apologize if I mispronounced that name, uh, who, by the way, is a longtime Magic the Gathering artist and a vocal no AI supporter to get some answers. Now, Osandon answered very quickly and provided me with the following statement. First of all, I do not use artificial intelligence, not AI, he says in parentheses, for my work, and no one but you and my director have asked me. And that image is completely painted. It is one of my favorite recent jobs that I've been able to do. And if you see other old works, you can see that my tendency is very similar when it comes to painting. I always play with warm and cold ones on my face. Thanks to the work together with the art director, they gave me the freedom and appropriate time to develop it. This character is completely painted from scratch with a gray and superimposed color technique. Then I paint the cold tones to give atmosphere and light. It took me two, more than two weeks and my director was very happy with this work. Uh, Nestor also went and shared a number of work in progress pieces with me, which uh, I hopefully are playing over this video. Now, D&D later released their own statement confirming that they had checked to see if the art was made using generative AI and they had confirmed that it was not. Now, for what it's worth, the content creator in question apologized and said he'd stop with the TTRPG news videos, which might be a little bit of overkill, but I will leave that to his conscious. However, it's a good reminder to make sure that your news sources or content sources or whatever are checking facts, they're asking questions, and just generally putting in the work. You know, journalism, it's not an easy job. You know, I've made lots of mistakes over the years too, um, but you know, you just gotta keep on asking questions and making sure you get the whole story before you jump to any conclusions. Oh boy, so you actually learned something today? The content creator Joe Cat is winding down his videos after receiving harassment for a two-year-old video involving Baldur's Gate 3. The creator, who's best known for making the crap guides to D&D, which are uh, animated videos are very popular, has been the target of harassment over a 30-second video he posted parodying the song Girls by Lizzo that featured characters of Baldur's Gate 3. In a post explaining what he's been going through, Joe Cat noted that he's received harassing private messages on Discord and Twitch, and has even had suspicious packages sent to his family due to all of the attention that he's received. I've always kept quiet about it because speaking out about it publicly, defending myself, any reaction to it would just encourage more and be presented as my own fault as well, he said. But if that's the trade-off to do something like share the things I make that I'm proud of on the internet, seeing as I'm writing this, it's probably an indicator that I'm just not cut out for it and the best thing for everyone would be to stop and pursue something else. Honestly, it's a bunch of bullshit that this is happening, and we wish Joe Cat all the best and hope that he can return to content creation in the future. Seriously, do not let the harassment get to you, man. Uh, been there, and it, it's an awful experience to go through, but, you know, 
don't let your uh, light be bullied out by others. Be strong. In something entirely different and more pleasant, Critical Role's Laura Bailey has been announced as the narrator for Worlds of Aria, a new co-op tabletop role-playing video game coming out in 2024. The game uses a D100 system and lets players choose be from between 10 characters in a storyline that plays out on a virtual table. Now, there's also a co-op version that lets you actually play through your own kind of campaign too, so it's kind of like a VTT, but not really. Uh, Bailey will be the narrator for the entire game, guiding th players through uh, various scenes. Now, Bailey, of course, she's always been a rock star in the video game space. Uh, just this year, Stray Gods the Musical and Spider-Man 2 are just the latest in her long line of hit performances. So Laura Bailey, TTRPGs, probably a bunch of dice, sounds like a winning formula to me. You and your fellow adventurers have completed a quest for Grand Duke. At his request, you raided this tomb to retrieve a powerful scepter. Now, you await your reward. Wait, what did he just say? Oh no, Grand Duke has revealed himself to be a villain. What an absolute surprise. Atomic Mass Games has announced more Star Wars Shatterpoint sets coming out in 2024. Now these are the two Ewok themed sets and they are coming out in February. One set features Leia as the primary unit, while the other features Logray, Wicket, R2-D2, and C-3PO. Now, the cool thing about these releases, other than the fact that you're going to get Ewoks on the table a lot quicker than Star Wars Legion did, is that Leia is one of only two characters to have multiple miniatures in Star Wars Shatterpoint, joining Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker, who has three miniatures, and um, also Ahsoka. She has two minis as well, but you know, Leia is, has more miniatures than Luke Skywalker, which is, which is actually pretty cool. There is a great disturbance in the Force. And finally, Amazon and the Tolkien Estate have won a copyright lawsuit against Demetrius Polychron, an author who wrote an unauthorized sequel to the Lord of the Rings novels. Polychron then filed a suit against Amazon and the Tolkien Estate, claiming that the Rings of Power, the TV show, had actually taken material from his books. The judge not only dismissed Polychron's lawsuit with prejudice, meaning that it can't be refiled, the judge then ruled in the Tolkien estate's favor when they countersued for infringing on their copyright. The end result, Polychron will no longer be able to sell his book or its sequel, The Two Trees, and he'll also have to pay over $134,000 in attorney's fees. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! So that's all the news that we have this week. Let us know what your favorite story was in the comments section.